Good morning. Thanks for joining us again. Today's reading is Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And he didn't know what was being done by the angel, didn't know that what was being done by the angel was real, but he thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. Now Peter came to himself, and he said, Now I'm sure that the Lord has sent his angel, and rescued me from the hand of Herod, and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy she didn't open the gate, but ran and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, You're out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, It's his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. <clears throat> Now when day came, there was no little disturbance among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and didn't find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord. Having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, The voice of a god and not of a man. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him down, because he didn't give God the glory. And he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. But the word of God increased and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. And this is kind of an interesting one, especially given the readings from this past Sunday. We have the parable of the sower, where uh, God's word is, at the same time, the thing that's going to accomplish the task which God intends for it, and yet it's rejectable, and it comes in um, meekness and humbleness. <clears throat> it gets planted in all these places and doesn't even give, um, give a crop. We see this happening in real time, or in real life here in this story, where uh, Peter and the other apostles are doing ministry among the Jews, and the Jews don't like it. Uh, the, it. Let's see. Herod arrests, uh, who's the other guy? Herod arrests James. And he has him killed. And the Jews love it. So then Herod decides, okay, I'll arrest the next one. It makes me popular with the people to uh, arrest these Christians and imprison them and kill them. And so that's what he's doing. And the word of God's not getting traction like we might expect among the Jewish people. Or like we might have hoped for, I should say. But then, uh, God's not done. And... God is not going to, um, well, he's going to maintain control over the whole situation. It, it looks pretty hopeless for the Christians at this time. People are behind locked doors. Even Peter himself has to knock in order to be let into this house. Um, so things aren't looking good. But then God releases Peter from prison and uh, does so miraculously with an angel. And then we have uh, Herod's death coming after that. And it's, it's interesting to see kind of how these two things go. Peter's life is flashing before his eyes, and then God rescues him. And then Herod dies because he didn't give glory to God. <clears throat> when people were calling him a god, and he was struck down. And I love, in verse 24, um, well, I'll read, yeah. So, so Herod dies, 
and then it says he died because uh, cause he didn't give God the glory, and then Herod is eaten by worms, and he breathes his last. Uh, it's like he's died, disintegrated, dead and buried. He's a goner. And then the very next verse just says very simply, but the word of God increased and multiplied. And it's kind of like whose side are you going to be on? Who do you think is worth trusting? Well, I'll give you a little hint, spoiler alert. Uh, the word of God is going to be the thing that wins out in the end. And the word of God does continue to increase and multiply. Barnabas and Saul come back to a lineup along with John Mark. And uh, the word of God, like we always remind ourselves, the word of God endures forever. It doesn't always look like it. Sometimes it's in meekness and humbleness. People aren't convinced like we hope they might be. But the word of God will continue to endure. And uh, those of us who trust it will be, um, well, it'll show itself to be trustworthy. We'll put it that way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank, you. <clears throat> we thank you for your word that you give to us that does endure forever. We thank you for your incarnate word, our Savior Jesus Christ, whom you sent to save us from our sins by his death and resurrection. We ask that you would always hold us in hope that because of his death and resurrection, we have been given eternal life with you. Bless us as we go through this week. Help us to uh, love and serve our neighbor and to honor you with all we do. In the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us.